Hi and um, welcome to another chat about what a part of MEX or maintenance management. Today's topic is a, is a very short one, it's about the activator and showing you, you know, the fields that are in there. Firstly to start with, let me say what, tell you what the activator is. It takes all the PMs for every asset you have inside the MEX system and it creates work orders for them. That's it. That's the only job it's there to do. There's an activator screen which we're going to look at in just a minute and it actually has all the information required to create the work orders. But you as a user of MEX, well you may never see this and also too, you don't have to see it. You can actually set a switch inside MEX just so this thing runs at the start of each day, creates the work orders you need and you never have to see it. It's a scheduler. But as you can see it, we need to actually show you what all these fields are and what they mean. So let's just have a quick look inside the activator. So to start with, <coughs> on the left hand side is the status of that particular record. Now what each record is here is, okay, I'll move across to the right a bit. Now it's basically saying this particular um, PM has this particular asset on it. It's for a one year external inspection. And it's currently saying it's overdue. Now, so this, so that means that basically that one year in inspection is overdue on asset 03041TRB. Now, there's a heap of statuses down this left hand side. So let's just go through them. Overdue, pretty obvious. That means it's due to be turned into a work order. This little box here, with a tick, tick box or not a tick on it, is really just a legacy item to say that this is overdue and it's been in the system right since we first made it 20 years ago. Um, so really it's a bit, you know, it's a bit old now. The um, due more than seven days in the future means no work order will be created because that particular job is due, you know, outside the range of what we're looking at. And if I scroll down, this one here can't be turned into a work order, there's no last done date. So the smartest thing to, be, to do here is if you do want it to create work orders, is click on the PM number, go to that particular asset number in the asset using tab, and give it a last done date. It can't schedule without it. Further down, okay, due within the next 30 days. Okay, we're actually looking 30 days in advance here. Um, so therefore it's saying that that particular job is due within the next 30 days, and it will actually um, create a work order for us. Now just moving down, there's one other, a couple of other fields that I wanted to look at and we will find them eventually. So the other status is, is if you don't have a reading entered in the system. If your PM is based upon some sort of usage like kilometres, uh, let's just scroll out a bit faster. Oh, I don't think we're going to find one there. Let me just change this filter. I'll clear that and just give us everything. There's 31,000 records, by the way, in this activator listing. Um, so there's quite a lot. Uh, it's, there it is. Okay, this particular one says readings need to be added before a work order can be created. In other words, it's, you know, it's based upon cycles and it can't actually, you know, it, it can't actually schedule any work because there's no readings that have been input into the system. Now back to the top, let's just run across the top then. The asset number, okay, we know that that's the asset number that we're, this PM's for, that's the PM. You can go directly to the PM here by just clicking on that a description, it's a six month inspection. And then going across, okay, I'm just scrolling across the screen now, lead time is 30 days, that means you want this PM to turn into a work order 30 days before it's due to be done, so it gives you time to organise stuff like parts and space and all that, or contractors. Um, what job type it is, what, if, if there's a contractor doing it, you know who they are, and if this is for a particular internal department like electrical, mechanical, instrumentation, you can have multiple departments, and the activator can be filtered to work by department. The next little section is there showing you when it's next due the next due date, the next due reading, and you know, and we've also got a, a secondary clause. Do you know he can have every 10,000 kilometers or six months? Well, in ca that case there, there'd be a, if it did have a dual clause on it, it would show that there. Now, the next part is also quite useful because it's telling you 
what work orders currently exist on those assets for that PM. So in this case here, work order number 45226 has been raised on that asset, which is dot, 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 dot. Um, and it's for PM number 1068. Um, unusual asset number, but that's what's here. And, but there's a work order currently open for that. And that becomes important as I discuss things later on. And then this is, this is really the conditional things that do a lot inside the activator. Hierarchy, okay, which means you could have, say for example, a one month, three month yearly um, range of PMs on an asset. Or you could have, um, you know, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 Ks. And basically hierarchy will manage to actually, it'll organize the work orders to be created when they're due to be done. And fixed. Now, what fixed does is fixed says this is a fixed schedule or it's not a fixed schedule. If it's a fixed schedule, <coughs> um, and actually, no, I'll explain this more later, just a quick look at it. Fixed schedule means, um, and whether this PM, whether this job is actually an inspection, again, I'll cover that later. And this is just telling you when it was last done. So the last done date and the last done reading. To make the activator work is very simple. Okay, as I said, you don't have to run it manually. If you want to run it manually, press the auto generate. If you want to raise just one work order at a time, just press, click on the record, press raise work order. If you press auto generate, it will go through these 31,000 records and it'll create all the work orders that are due. If you want work orders to be printed after the generation process, just click this button here. And the days in advance is how far into the future you want this to look. If you only want it the next week, then just change that value. Now, that's just a quick look at this. Um, thanks, I hope you enjoyed it.